name's Daryl Mitchell and um, today I'm here at Langley Studios um, with uh, Jules from Heavy Traffic Music and I'm recording um, my solo album which is uh, coming out soon uh, once we've finished recording it which is called The Geography of Fish but uh, more about that later. Um, so I was asked what my musical influences are um, which could be a very long answer so I'll keep it as, as brief as I can and say that my first influence that I can remember is the Beatles um, and apparently I used to jump up and down to the Beatles in my high chair um, and I've loved the Beatles all my life and there's something about their songs, the way they're crafted um, the way the lyrics fit with the, the sounds and the music and George Martin and his amazing production um, that you know will stay with me for the rest of my life and um, you know, uh, they're, they're are absolutely my favourite band um, and I suppose looking at it chronologically after that I really got into punk and new wave and uh, that's really what started me playing guitar and writing songs because that movement sort of made it feel like everybody could do it and so I thought well I'm gonna have a go and, and I did um, so I suppose my favourite uh, artist from that era would be The Clash uh, because The Clash was so cool they're just completely the coolest band um, and I love the jam um, and I mean really all of the acts around that time uh, you know were fantastic and over the years I've been lucky enough to do some gigs with some of them which has been uh, one of those you know great moments when you think everything's come full circle um, so uh, after that I got into the post-punk stuff and uh, I suppose my favorites of the post-punk era were Aztec Camera and um, I think Roddy Frame was the biggest influence on my songwriting over the years uh, you know and the way he kind of combined his guitar playing with um, you know with the lyrics of the song and the way he put it over so I suppose um, if I had to pick anybody um, that I was probably most influenced by overall it would be Roddy Frame and then most recently I'm really into the tallest man on earth who uh, I say this and people haven't heard of him but he's fantastic he's from Sweden um, his name's Christian Matson and uh, he is um, a singer, songwriter, guitar player, but everything he does is so completely full on um, that you know uh, it, it's inspiring. His lyrics are, are sort of beautiful. Um, you know, he's got a bit of Dylan about him, um, but yeah, his guitar playing is is you know mind blowingly good without showing off. So I suppose I could talk about that all day, but those are my biggest influences. So the second question that I was asked is about um, my EP which is coming out um, later this month or in April um, and it's called Dust and Satellites which is the second time that I've released something called Dust and Satellites um, and this really has been a lockdown project for, for me and my two sons um, Alex and Sam and we've been working on this over the um, third lockdown and the idea was really to return to an album that um, I was involved in back in 2009-2010 I recorded it with my band The Occasional Orchestra and um, the album's sort of long since deleted now um, but I wanted to return to some of the tracks uh, because Alex and Sam remember them from um, the days when they were young when they were little um, and we used to, I used to drag them around to rehearsals and uh, to festivals and, and gigs and so it was uh, now they're both uh, they both play music and they both um, are learning to produce so it was a really good opportunity for them to um, sort of reimagine the songs um, and what I love about it is it's what how they they've produced them how they remember them from when they were from when they were little um, so the tracks on uh, on the EP are uh, Boating Lake which was the first track on the original um, the occasional orchestra album um, Boating Lake sort of a song about about dreams and about how real they feel but how quickly they kind of slip through your fingers when you wake up. Um, the second track on the album is called Tangled, that's quite a, a complicated lyric that one but it's really about um, sort of anxious hours waiting in hospitals and I suppose uh, the realisation that you know for these momentous moments that you spend in hospitals you, you're sort of sat on a plastic chair somewhere with a uh, a bottle of water and uh, just made to wait there for hours on end and um, so uh, that's Tangled, it's sort of in Wall's time. Um, 
The third track was uh, produced by Alex and that's called Warm Earth. Um, and it's great that it was produced by Alex because uh, he sort of inspired the song when I wrote it back in 2009. And I wrote it about, um, he, was, he was very young at the time and uh, he just learned to talk and just didn't really stop talking. So uh, it was about us going on a walk with the dog and him talking endlessly about pirates and um, shipwrecks and space and, uh, and stars and um, speculating about what stars are. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a lovely moment when I came in, I, I wrote the words to that song. So Warm Earth is just, uh, just guitar, one guitar, one vocal, um, which is the way that Alex wanted it. And then uh, the final song is uh, called Cheerleader. And um, I wrote Cheerleader um, on a, a trip to San Francisco in 2009 um, because I'm really into American football and uh, I went to watch the, the 49ers play. And um, uh, while I was there, I went to Hate Ashbury, which is the, the you know the, the hippie, uh, the place where the hippie movement really started and finished, started and finished in the 60s. And there's a great guitar shop in there, and I didn't have much money, so all I could afford was a ukulele. But uh, I wanted to buy something from a guitar shop in Hate Ashbury, so I bought this ukulele and wrote that song. And it's uh, really about a, a cheerleader that I saw at the the American football game. Um, who looked a bit sad and I was wondering what she was thinking so I just invented her thoughts and um, and I guess her life so it's just complete fiction based on how she was looking at the time but you know how America is and my thoughts about America are all, all kind of wrapped up in that song and the video that, um, that goes with it. People um, often ask me about songwriting because uh, I think um, people who've never written a song uh, are often intrigued by how it's done. Uh, and I think it's one of these things that seems impossible, but um, you know, is either a lot easier than you think it is, or is something there's something magical about it. Um, and I say there's something magical about it because I don't really understand how it happens. Um, and I think it's different for everybody who writes songs. But for me, I always start um, with a lyrical idea. So I've got a notebook where I just jot down things that I'm thinking, uh, you know, or bits of news or a title that I think is good. Um, and um, having an iPhone is great because they've got this, you know, this, this voice memo facility that you can record onto as just like, you know, your little musical notebook. Um, so I just jot down chords and things that, um, you know, things that I'm doodling or noodling at and uh, and then put the two together, piece the two together. But it really has to start with an idea and I've learned over the years through lots of uh, dramatic failures that have taken me loads of time to, to do and I've ended up hating when I've finished them, um, that it's really about the concept. So you've got to have a concept about a song that you can kind of explain. You know, it can be weird or strange or different but I think you have to have that concept in your head before a song really hangs together but you know I, I like the bit I like to get to the bit where it's finished so if I'm not careful I rush it a bit uh, towards the end and that's where I've got to be a bit more disciplined and take the time over it um, but I think my influences going back to my influences you know, I think that's really where uh, my influences show in how I write songs because my songs are always pretty structured you know, a bit like, um, you know, I mentioned the Beatles and uh, and about punk and new wave, you know, they're, they're always, um, you know, there's always a formula or, a, a you know, um, you know the, those songs always kind of have a chorus, you know, a proper chorus and things like that. So my songs tend to be, um, I try and make them catchy, I tend to make them go somewhere. Um, I think there's nothing worse than getting towards an end of the end of a song and thinking actually that sort of that song's not taken me anywhere at all. So I like to get to the the end of a song and taking people with me somewhere, wherever that is. I suppose the subjects that I write about um, has changed quite a lot over the years. So if you listen back to the the Edna album that um, I wrote back in the 90s and compare it with the stuff I'm writing now, it's really different because I'm really different. You know. Um, I didn't have any kids then. Since then, I've had kids. Kids have, you know, uh, almost grown up. Um, my life's very different. I've got a different outlook on life, so my lyrics are different, and I think that probably shows up in the songs. 
Um, and I feel good about songwriting at the moment, at this point in my life, because you know, I've had a lot of experiences to, uh, you know, to think, reflect back on and, and write about, and I've made lots of mistakes. Um, making mistakes is great fodder for uh, songwriting, so I like to be able to um, go back and put things right that I did wrong the first time in my songs. Um, and I write songs that, you know, that sometimes are just things that I've invented. Uh, some of the people in my songs are people that I really know, and they might not know it. But uh, you know they're they're in there somewhere, um, and I suppose over the years I've got this back catalogue of songs, you know, hundreds of songs that I've written, and uh, you know it's really nice to have this uh, parallel life that I've ever invented for myself in my songs. So I love songwriting. It's the you know it's the thing that I get the most enjoyment out of in life. I think, and I'll carry on doing it, you know, as long as I can hold a pen. So I guess it's time to tell you about uh, what I'm doing now, what I'm involved with, because I've got quite a lot going on musically at the moment, despite the fact that live music seems to have um, ground to a halt for hopefully temporarily. Um, so at the moment I'm making an album and uh, it's called The Geography of Fish. And um, there's a story behind that title, which is that when I was a kid at school, I was mad about fish, all kinds of fish. And uh, one summer holiday, I was asked to write a project about geography and I wrote it about fish and called it The Geography of Fish. So this album is really the, the, uh, the project of, of my life, which has been, uh, I've been putting off for years and years and haven't uh, really got around to. So I'm really thrilled to be able to be doing that. So the album Geography of Fish, is gonna be out um, later this year. Uh, we've had a bit of a break um, in recording it because of lockdown so we've uh, we've only just got back into the studio again and we're around three quarters of the way through it at the moment um, so uh, and my backing or my band um, to help me are my two sons Alex and Sam and um, it's being produced by Jules from Heavy Traffic Music and um, so um, yeah do have a listen um, to that when it comes out uh, the most imminent thing, as I mentioned, is uh, is the EP, solo EP, called Dust and Satellites, and uh, that's out on the 26th of April. Um, so really looking forward to that coming out, and uh, that was recorded at home, um, produced by uh, Sam and Alex Mitchell. And then, um, recently, an album that I was involved with back in the 90s, um, when I was in a band called Edna, um, has just been released after all, all this time. So it was a, an album, we got signed to a record company back in, uh, uh, back in 96. And um, I suppose Edna was very different to the, the kind of stuff I'm doing now. It was sort of real Britpop at the time when Britpop was everywhere. Um, and a lot of the themes on the album are very 90s. You know, I'm sort of talking about um, the National Lottery and, you know, uh, and the news of the world, which doesn't exist anymore, and ce what celebrities were doing at the time. Um, so if, when you listen to it, it really is genuinely uh, a slice of the 90s that's just, being, that's just been released. But we recorded this album, and um, for whatever reason, it didn't get released, and I, I can't honestly remember the reason. I think partly it was because the record company moved on and wanted to do different things. Um, and I think it was because the band was in a slightly different place as well. So, but we listened back to it and um, played it to Jules from Heavy Traffic Music, who really liked it and wanted to put it out. So, we uh, got a great cover on it and uh, and put it out. And um, hopefully, the band's gonna, uh, all three quarters of the band are gonna get back to back together and and play it. So we're working on that at the moment. Hopefully, when gigs start again, that's uh, something we'll be doing. Uh, but the, the big thing that I'm involved with is uh, the, my band, The Occasional Orchestra. The Occasional Orchestra have been going for 10 years and um, we have, uh, we're signed to, um, to Heavy Traffic Music and we're going to re be re-releasing our, our back catalogue starting with Urban Foxes, which is um, an album that I'm really proud of that we recorded in 2018. And I think we just, you know, for whatever reason, we didn't do it justice. It didn't 
you know, we didn't get to tour it as much as we wanted to, um, and it didn't really get out there and uh, as as much as we we wanted it to and hoped it would. So we're going to re-release that, and hopefully it will be something that um, you know will strike a chord with people and they'll they'll want to want to listen to it. Um, and the occasional orchestra are desperate to go out there and play some gigs. We love gigging and we love playing live. Um, you know, we we're just absolutely desperate to get out there and do that like musicians all over the country are desperate to go and do their thing and hopefully there's lots of people desperate to go out there and listen so um, you know we're we're looking forward to, to playing live again um, and also the occasional orchestra have got you know roughly an album's worth of new stuff waiting to be recorded but uh, you know we're not in a huge rush with that we've got plenty of uh, you know, plenty of material to release and plenty of material to um, to go out and play live. So um, that's what I'm doing at the moment, which is quite a lot, and uh, it's a lot of songs, it's a lot of lyrics to remember, uh, and a lot of chords. But uh, I think it's all going to be all right. So um, I suppose just a big thanks to Heavy Traffic Music, because um, I've certainly found my spiritual home at Heavy Traffic Music, and. Uh, you know, it's a very creative uh, group of people um, to have joined and a very creative place to come and rehearse and record. Um, and, uh, you know, we're, we're really excited to be um, sort of uh, part, of, part of that team. Um, and uh, really to anybody who's listening, come, come and support live music and, uh, you know, get out there and, um, you know, I know that there won't be such big crowds for a while yet, and that's absolutely fine. But uh, if you've missed live music, you know, go up and tell one of the musicians, uh, go to a gig and tell somebody that you've missed it and, and that you've enjoyed it, because it's been really hard for people out there, um, and it's been very hard for musicians who've uh, you know lost their livelihood and uh, and really have missed that connection um, with other people. But thanks for listening.